So back at the beginning of this year, I actually had a vision from the Lord, a series of visions along with several prophetic words. This actually happened on January 5th, 2023. And what these visions have to do with is wormwood, which is actually found in Revelation chapter 8. And so I'm going to be showing you some scriptural context for the idea that I'm talking about today, but I'm also going to be sharing with you partly a metaphor of what is happening in the church today and what the Holy Spirit is saying to you and to me right now through this message. Before I get started, I sense the Holy Spirit asking me to pray, so I'm going to do that. Holy Spirit, I just ask that you would speak clearly through this, that every person would take away whatever it is you have for them to take away and to hear today, no matter when they're listening to this or watching it. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would just move on every heart today, even the ones that have come to criticize or come to throw stones or whatever it may be. Lord, I ask that you would move on their hearts as well, whether they listen to the video or not, Lord, that they would receive a touch from you today, Holy Spirit, and that Jesus would be exalted and that Jesus and what he's done for us would be more fully revealed to every heart today in Jesus' mighty name. So I'm going to jump in, y'all. This is some crazy stuff and some really cool stuff at the same time. This is what I saw on January 5th. I saw a vision of Venus flytraps. So they're those plants that actually eat bugs. And I had this sense when I saw this that it represented deception leading to captivity. The fly lands on the plant thinking that it's going to get something, ends up getting swallowed, essentially. And this is happening in the church today, is what I, I sense from the Holy Spirit right now. This is what I saw next, a vivid, beautiful field of grass and beautiful plants with these many white, tiny flowers on them. Then I saw immediately after that, a vivid cactus growing in the middle of this field. So it's supposed to be a beautiful restful place. And then this cactus, which is prickly and dangerous and painful, grows up in the middle of it and it spoils the field. This is what I sense from the Holy Spirit right now. You wouldn't go and have a picnic in a field where you knew there was cactus growing, even if you only saw a small evidence of that cactus. And that is what I hear the Lord saying, this is happening in my church today. And I'm going to be revealing to you what he's talking about here in a few minutes. This is what I saw next. I saw a vision of a dragon. And then I heard the Lord say this. He said, the great dragon making war against the saints. And then he said, it starts right here, right now within the four walls. So within the four walls, could represent the body of Christ, but it could also represent the organization called the church where there are unbelievers and believers attending. And then I heard this, the Lord said, if Satan can take down the altar, he can disrupt the flow of God's presence on the earth. This is what Revelation 12, 17 says. So the dragon was enraged with the woman and went off to make war with the rest of her children who keep the commandments of God and hold to the testimony of Jesus. So the same way that the devil, yes, he's represented by this dragon figure in Revelation. He has characteristics of a snake in scripture, right? We see that he's crafty. We see that he's made himself as an enemy against God in many ways, and also an enemy against the people of God. In the same way that he makes war against the children of God in Revelation, he's making war against the church today. And some of his tactics have been successful, and we've not been fully aware of the schemes of the devil. And that is what I believe God is trying to communicate through this message here. This is what I heard next. I heard the Lord say, Wormwood is spreading. And then he said, infiltrating the purity of the message and my word. He said, Wormwood among my bride. And then he said, the spirit of confusion, constant disconnection from my voice and power. So this is going to be more clear in a minute, but I looked up the wormwood plant. And I'm going to show you where wormwood is mentioned in Revelation in a second. The wormwood plant is like a bitter tasting plant that was actually used in drinks at one point like absinthe, uh, which was once used as a hallucinogen. And it was actually banned in the U.S. from 1912 to 2007 because this drink often contained these compounds that in excess can cause hallucinations, seizures, and even death. So we see this idea of wormwood related to hallucinations and then also relating to destruction or death. So what is this wormwood that's infiltrated the church that God is talking about? I'm actually about to reveal that to you in a minute, but I want to show you, we see this pattern following 
the mentioning of wormwood in scripture, these are the three things that happens. Number one, wormwood always has to do with following the stubbornness of one's own heart. Number two, it has to do with pollution and poisoning of the waters. And then number three, it has to do with judgment or the wrath of God. This is Revelation 8, 10 through 11. It says, The third angel sounded, and a great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of waters. The star is named Wormwood, and a third of the waters became Wormwood. And so we see that the effect that this star has is that the water becomes polluted, right? It says, And many people died from the waters because they were made bitter. So there's a bitterness that comes with it. And I hear this from the Holy Spirit right now. The Lord is saying that I want my people to drink freely of the waters of my spirit within them that is bubbling up within them, the new life that I've given them in Christ Jesus. But oftentimes they are mixing the waters of my spirit with the waters of wormwood and with this bitterness. And what ends up happening, I hear the Lord saying, is that Yes, it's delightful in the moment of seeing the the water and and tasting it and drinking it, but then it becomes bitter in the stomach and it leaves a lasting effect of pain and of destruction. And I hear the Lord saying, my people, let the cup of wormwood go. Don't drink from that source anymore. Don't go back to that well anymore. Don't go back to that spring. I have new water for you. I have fresh water for you found in my presence through my Holy Spirit. And if you will take hold of that cup today, I will refresh you and I will give you a life of fruitfulness and of joy and of peace. So these are the other times that Wormwood is actually mentioned in Scripture. Deuteronomy 29, 18, it says, So that there will not be any among you, a man or woman or family or tribe, whose heart turns away today from the Lord our God to go to serve the gods of those nations, that there will not be among you a root bearing poisonous fruit and wormwood. So the Lord is trying to stop his people, the children of Israel, right, from going into this place where they are they're taking part in something that's going to result in bitterness in their lives and a spring of bitterness. And what is that thing? We see what it is in verses 24 through 26. The two things that God mentions here is, number one, is that they abandoned the covenant of God. So it was the abandoning of the covenant. And number two, that they served other gods. So these things go hand in hand. But God actually made a way for them to not have to walk in those ways and not have to taste of the bitterness. And we see that in verses 16 through 17. Number one, God delivers them from Egypt. So they see God's mighty hand at work. So why would they go over into something else that God was not offering them, right? Number two, God says that he leads them through the nations that were serving false gods so that they could see the effects of serving false gods so so that they would not be tempted by those things right but but they're tempted nonetheless why because human beings are are fallen people our nature is the nature of sin but when we are born again we suddenly take on the nature of Christ and listen we don't have to go back into those old things any longer and we get to live a life of peace and of joy and this and there's a life bearing fruit that's springing up out of our hearts from the holy spirit this is jeremiah 9:15 it says Behold, I will feed this people wormwood, and I will give them poisoned water to drink. And and again, we see God showing the reason. Why is he giving them this wormwood and this poisoned water? Verses 13 through 14 show the reason. Number one, they abandoned the law. Or we could also say, again, they abandoned the covenant, right? They abandoned, he says, they abandoned my voice and they didn't walk according to it. So they abandoned the voice of God in their lives. And number three, they had a stubborn heart and followed after Baals or, or false gods. So there's so much scriptural warning against Wormwood, right? But what is God talking about today? This is it. This is the next thing I saw in this vision. Immediately after I had seen those other things, I began to see this image of a lady who was obviously a witch, And I heard the Lord say this next. He said, it's witchcraft and it has crept into the church. Now listen to me, before you turn this off, the Lord is not talking about spells and reading witchcraft books and things like that. The Lord's talking about something else that the church has taken hold of in many ways that they do not realize is actually witchcraft. That's what he's talking about. If we have the nature of Christ and we want to obey God, We would not go into witchcraft knowingly unless we were deceived about what it was. 
This is the next thing I heard. I heard the Lord say, what they tolerated has grown in patches and spread quickly until it has stolen the rest of some of the saints because there is nowhere to lay one's head. So he's saying the, our rest, our ability to rest has been stolen. What we tolerated has grown and has, has spread. The same way that one cactus in a field could quickly spread and become many cactus and destroy the whole field. That's what the Lord is saying has happened here. He said, the green pastures have become overridden with dross. So now the Lord is mixing illustrations here. He's, he's talking about the green pastures of, of being able to rest. And then also dross, meaning something that was pure like a, a silver or, or a pure metal has grown impure. Psalm 23, 2 says, He lets me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. Talking about the rest of the Lord. And then Proverbs 25, 4 says, Take away the impurities from the silver, and there comes out a vessel for the smith. Meaning that there's usefulness involved, right? So the Lord is hitting two aspects here. Number one is, He wants us to be able to rest and out of us being able to rest in what Jesus has done for us, the believers rest in Hebrews chapter 4. Then suddenly we become useful, not in the sense of being used and discarded, but in the sense of our lives bearing the fruit of the Holy Spirit and the kingdom of God growing, not just around us, but through us and in us and because of what God is doing through us. And so the same chapter that we see this wormwood in Revelation chapter 8, we actually see witchcraft mentioned. It says, The rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent of the works of their hands. And then it talks about demonic ideologies, uh, worshiping other gods, murders, sexual immorality, thefts, and then also witchcraft. So this is something the world is involved in, and the devil is trying to get the church to take hand in, right? And so I believe this is about to become very clear right now what God is talking about. Jeremiah 23, 13 says about Wormwood again, it says, Moreover, among the prophets of Samaria, I saw an offensive thing. They prophesied by Baal and led my people Israel astray. Verse 15 says, Therefore, this is what the Lord of armies says concerning the prophets. Behold, I am going to feed them Wormwood and make them drink poisonous water. I hear the Lord saying this right now. When the prophets or those who have the gift of prophecy under the new covenant continually refuse to abide by my voice and what my spirit is actually saying to them, and instead they replace my words with their own thoughts, their own judgments, and their own desires, I twist what they're saying until it becomes of no more use to my people, to my bride, and I eventually let them fall on their faces. That is not my heart for my people. That is not my plan for my prophets. I hear the Lord saying this right now. I have a good plan for you. I have a good plan for each and every one of my children, for every single person that comes into my family. I want you to listen to me, and I want you to abide by my voice in your life, to be led by my spirit. But when the stubbornness of someone's heart keeps blocking me from moving, I eventually take a step back and I let them go into the thing that they've allowed to rule their heart, that they've allowed to lead their life until they see their need for me clearly. I don't want anyone to perish, but I also don't want my bride to become useless for my kingdom. I don't want anyone to miss the plan that I have for them. I want every person in my church to finish well, to find the life-giving spirit that I've placed inside of them, to take hold of what Jesus has done for them, and not to go back into the fleshly ways, into the ways of the world. But this is where the problem has occurred in many ways, is that the fleshly desires, as mentioned in James chapter 4, have crept in and in some ways become the base for why people are doing what they're doing. Yes, even operating in the gifts of the Spirit for fleshly reasons. And my gifts and my callings are irrevocable, and they still work according to my will, but it's not the way I designed it to be. I designed my church to rest on the firm foundation of Jesus Christ, to rest on the covenant that I've given them. I hear the Lord saying, Oh, my bride, if you would just give up those desires in your heart and come back to me, you would see clearly that I've already provided everything you need. I've already given you all of the things that your heart truly longs for. 
and they are found in a man named Jesus Christ, the perfect Son of God. And there's nothing else. There's nowhere else you can go. I hear the Lord saying, I want you to see clearly what I've done for you. I want my word to remain in you, to transform you, to change your heart until it looks like mine. I hear the Lord saying, surrender, just surrender. Let me take over today. Let me forgive the things that have been dragging you down, the things that have been holding you back from my kingdom purposes. Let me forgive the ways in which your heart has looked away from me and to other things. Just surrender. Just take it back to the Lord. I hear the Holy Spirit saying, just take it back to the Lord and remain in that place of surrender. As I heal the hurt, as I heal the pain, as I heal the wounds, And you will begin to study out and see that I do have a good plan for you. And the way has already been made for you to walk in righteousness, to walk in victory, to walk in truth. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I just honor you, Jesus. I thank you for speaking today. Thank you for the word that you've given us through the scriptures, Lord, that we can stand on. We know is true. We we can stand firmly on it. We never have to ever falter. We never have to ever rock. We never have to ever be swayed left or right because we know that what you've said is true and it never changes. And not the least stroke of your word will fall to the ground, Lord, before it is all accomplished. It is not going to return void. And I just thank you for moving today, Holy Spirit, Lord, that what we want is, (laughs) is, is really of no importance unless it's what you want, God. So we just surrender our hearts to you today and we ask that you replace our desires with your desires. Our desires even for good things, Lord, that you would replace them for for desires for God things, for the move of the Spirit, Lord, the flow of your Holy Spirit. I thank you that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is life, there's new life. (laughs) I hear the Lord saying this for you today. He said, he's saying there is new life for you today. There's new life for you today. Let me share the reason why. This is the next thing I heard the Lord say. He said, The dross of the world mixing in with the purity the church is meant to walk in and diluting the power and reach. What is this dross that the Lord is talking about? It's witchcraft and it's rebellion. It's the spirit of rebellion and it brings confusion. And the reason it brings confusion is because we look at the promises in Scripture, right? And here's an example. We look at the promise of God to always provide everything we have need of. There's even promises of blessing. But then when we come at the promises with greed in our heart, which is never a motivation that the Holy Spirit gives us, it's a a motivation of the flesh. When we come at those promises with greed, we say, hey, I'm going to speak by faith that I'm going to receive this blessing. Now, for some people, this example is going to hit home. For others, not so much. But we say, by faith, I'm going to receive this blessing. And we stand on that proclamation that we've made, that declaration. But then when it doesn't come to pass, We start to get bitter against God and we say, God, your word didn't work when the truth is that it was the greed in our heart that motivated us to say that in the first place. And it wasn't faith. Even though we we say it's faith, we say I'm speaking this by faith. Faith is based on what God has said. So if in the moment when we're saying, God, I'm declaring this blessing over my life, if the Holy Spirit is saying, hey, that's not what I have for you right now, then we have actually spoken not by faith. We've turned the word of God into witchcraft in that moment. And here's why. It's because witchcraft is ultimately boiled down to control. It's somebody trying to take control by any means necessary. God has never said in the word that we are meant to have control. God ultimately has control. We are meant to have surrender. We are meant to have trust in the one who has control. And that is why Paul said, I can be content in all things, whether I have a lot, abundance, or whether I have little, I can be content. Why? Because I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. See, Paul's answer to the problem was to abide in Christ, to be in Jesus. And this is what the word says, okay? This is amazing. The gospel of Jesus Christ is still the answer to this. It's the answer to this problem in the church. It's the answer to whatever you're going through today. And I can honestly say that. And here's why. Ephesians 1.3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. So the word says that we are blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I am not going to 
do a deep dive into everything that that means. But listen, we should all be on this path as Christians of learning exactly what that means. And for the rest of our lives, we're going to be learning more specifically what that means for us. But even when we don't fully understand it, we should never, ever, ever step off of the place of faith of standing on that word. Listen, even when you don't understand, you can still trust that God is telling the truth. And even when I don't understand why something hasn't come into my life yet, I can stand on the promise that I am blessed in Christ with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. So I can say, God, I don't need that specific blessing. Why? Because I ha- I'm i already blessed in every way in Christ Jesus. Every spiritual blessing I need, I have in Him. And that is the difference between surrender and control. See, that controlling spirit that spirit of witchcraft will lead you to try to manipulate God through the Word. Do you know what the Word really is? See, a lot of Christians, we read the Bible and we read the New Testament and it says things like the Word of God or the Word that was spoken to you. Most of the time in the New Testament, when it says a phrase like that, it's not talking about the Bible. It's talking about the message of Jesus Christ's death and resurrection. And what ends up happening is when we try to take a stand on something else other than the gospel message, we end up in a place of bitterness. We end up in a place of frustration and asking the question, why? A lot of times we just keep pushing and we keep steamrolling forward. But the answer is to go back to the cross and to release everything and say, God, even if in this life I don't get this thing that I want, that's okay. And I'm going to stop. Listen, Repentance means a change of mind that leads to a change of actions, right? So it's not just saying, God, even if I don't get this, that's okay. And then we keep pushing towards that thing. No, we let it go. We say, God, I'm going to stop spending so much time and effort trying to get that thing. And instead, what do you have for me to do in this life, in this time that I'm on earth? This is the next thing I heard the Lord say. He said, stop twisting my arm. And the Lord is saying this with a lot of love and a lot of grace. And I know that because the the word says he's cast our sins as far as the east is from the west. So there is no condemnation today and no shame that you should pick up at all. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. But listen, if we're doing something against the Holy Spirit that's grieving him, we need to stop and we need to say, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry for grieving you, Holy Spirit. Help me to live in a way that's not grieving you, but instead is honoring you and is is showing that I actually trust you, that you're telling the truth. This is what the Lord said, stop twisting my arm, lay everything down that you've been striving for and release it and give your life over to me. He said, let me lead you. Don't I have good plans? Don't I know better than you? He says, let the word of my son be your source, your truth, your life, your bread to eat and your water to drink. Let Jesus lead the way and you won't go off course. Do not be afraid, my bride. I am coming, and I'm leading you to a good end. Do not fear. Only wait upon me and release the temptations that have been pulling your heart in many different directions. The desire to control what only I can control. This is Revelation 12, verse 11. And it's talking about the church. And it says, And they overcame him because of the blood of the Lamb, And because of the word of their testimony, and they did not love their life, even when faced with death. See, Jesus talks about denying oneself and picking up one's cross. Picking up a cross is a sign of complete and total surrender, of losing one's life, right? But it's also a sign of following Jesus, of walking the same footsteps that he walked. The Lord does not specifically ask every Christian to die for the sake of the gospel, but he does ask some. But listen, he does ask every believer to die to oneself daily so that we can live for him. And can I describe for a moment what that's like? It's like releasing every ambition, everything in one's heart, giving it to God, not expecting any of that back, and then saying, yes, Holy Spirit, You can be my best friend. You can lead me. You can tell me exactly what you want me to do, even if it means I lose everything. And then the result of that is a life full of joy, full of peace, and listen, full of rest in Jesus, being able to actually rest and enjoy what God is giving you, whether it's what you ask for or not. It's it's what he gives you is good because he's a good shepherd and he knows what you need because he's your good father 
and he knows what you need before you ask. And you look around and you realize, man, the life that God has led me into, there are sacrifices. There are things that I wouldn't have given up on my own, but it actually looks like, even in the middle of the difficulties, it looks like green pastures. It looks like still waters. My heart is at peace and I can enjoy the Lord's presence. I can enjoy his voice and I get to enjoy whatever it is he has for me to do because I get to be a a vessel of glory, a vessel of honor for the Lord. Mm -hmm. I sing praises to your name. Oh Lord, praises to your name. Oh, Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord, praises to your name. Oh, Lord. For your name is great and greatly to be praised. I sing praises to your name. O Lord, praises to your name. O Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. Thank you, Jesus. I just feel this from the Holy Spirit right now, that the Lord wants to release the wind of the Holy Spirit over people. And that wind is going to carry you forward. It's going to move you forward. It's going to make what you're trying to do through striving and what I'm trying to do through striving easy because the Lord wants to do it. His strength is made perfect in weakness. It's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Let my wind carry you forward. Let my wind move you into this next season with ease, with gentleness. Some people can't see that in Scripture, but that's why Jesus said, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. The words used there actually mean pleasant and enjoyable and easy. (laughs) The Holy Spirit wants to do that for you. So I just pray that over every person listening, that the winds of the Holy Spirit would come and begin to make changes that only you can make, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you uh, want to find out how you can support these videos and and these messages, you can do that at troyblackvideos.com. You can also find links to my books there, my testimony book, My Mess, and then Stop Worrying, which is all about learning to live a life of peace in the Holy Spirit. But also it has a lot to do with the new covenant and how it looks to, to be led by the voice of God in everyday life and how to walk in the new covenant daily. And one last thing, if you haven't subscribed to The Mysterious Truth, This is another channel I have, and I just released a video all about the Nephilim, asking the question, are the Nephilim still here today? So I hope you get a chance to go watch that video and subscribe to that channel as well. That link is going to be below. I love you all so much, and I'll see you next time.